Someone said that uh, someone said that a gossip is a person who puts two and two together, whether they are or not. Sounds uh, like our friend R. Curry Hay. Now, I know how to add, Alan. If I put two to do together, it means it's a fact. If I say it, you can believe it. So let's talk about Christina Onass. She's weighing 220 pounds. So she checked herself into a health spa. I mean, she went on the zero diet, and you know what? She lost 40 pounds, and it's worked. Her childhood sweetheart, Terry Roussel, has proposed. She's engaged. He said if she loses 60 more pounds, he'll walk her down the aisle. The marriage is now set for May. It'll yeah, be but her what does Terry look wedding. like now? Hey, he's good looking. He's 33 years old. He's a Parisian businessman, heir to a big pharmaceutical fortune. Christina, I hope you found happiness at last. Well, okay. Now, Joan Collins, listen to this. She's saying American TV, it's a bunch of. I can't say what she says, garbage. She's saying commercials are an abomination. Well, I mean, Joan, how tacky. I mean, if it wasn't for American TV, honey, you'd be nude in B-movies still. Let's face it, this little, this little vixen, I don't know what her story is. Meanwhile, she's saying she's gonna spin off of Dynasty. Well, the co-stars are freaking out. That means maybe Dallas, Dallas with Dynasty, Dallas, it's all the same thing. Maybe Dynasty would fold if Joan left. Well, the truth is there is no vixen. That's not true. She's the only vixen. She's spreading a false rumor, trying to get a pay highs or maybe getting us ready for that steamy confessional of hers, past imperfect. But, Meanwhile, but, but, you can't blame Joan Collins for say, speaking out I can her blame opinion her. on television because... Oh, yeah, because, oh, no, she, don't, she says commercials are lousy, but doesn't she take those big bucks for a scoundrel? Doesn't she take that money over in London for the Cinzano liquor ad where they <laughs> sort of pour wine over strategically? In fact, she was at a London doesn't party. Doesn't sound like a lousy commercial. Maybe she likes those commercials. Well, if she likes them, then why does she put them down? Anyway, she ran into the actor who did that ad, she saw him sitting there. She went over and dumped a glass of champagne on his back. He turned around. He was really furious. He saw it was her, and she took him and said, tit for tat, honey. Meanwhile, she, don't offer her a drink, because she won't drink from your glass. She's deathly afraid of getting either herpes or AIDS, so she won't drink from anyone else's <laughs> glass. She won't take a cigarette from anyone else's lips. Meanwhile, she's <laughs> taking digs at Larry, Her Larry Hagman. She used to date him. Says, where did you get that southern accent? Didn't have it in the old days. You know, she thinks, well, she thinks he's a bit of a phony. I'm not sure. So, you know, people... she ought to, maybe she ought to see him on Sunday, the day he doesn't speak. Meanwhile, yeah, that's right, he doesn't speak. Mean, Can you tell anybody that story yet? Well, no, do you want to? Uh, well, just to touch on it. I think that's an interesting... He spends one day where he doesn't speak. Larry he Hagen. also gets in different drag every Sunday, too. Out of Malibu, he flies a different flag. He wears these mad outfits. He's a little eccentric. Uh -huh. Okay, but, but Joan but Collins... Wait a minute, the point I wanted to make about Joan Collins is that guys like you are all over these uh, stars once they get as big as Joan Collins. And I, I'd my, like my guys to be all like over. You, I mean, I'm talking about reporters and okay, writers. Okay, I'm ready. Always looking for a story about Joan Collins. So after talking about the same stuff she talks about uh, week after week, month after month, so maybe she just changes her tune and says something a little outrageous about, about television, and aren't you glad she did? So go ahead. Yeah, I sure am, and that's what I do. I try to come <laughs> back and say a little something myself, and it's yeah. all meant to be kind of funny. I mean, I this know. is not a vicious dig. It's a sense of humor. No. Meanwhile, uh, Joan was I showing like up. That hey, I don't like okay. yours either. Hey, watch that. <laughs> Don't touch me. Anyway, Helmut Berger showed up. Uh, Helmut Berger plays Peter DeVilbus, Fallon's lover on yeah. On uh, Dynasty, mm -hmm. and he showed up in a set, I don't really kind of eccentric and obnoxious, saying, I'm the only star, I'm the only actor. He's an hour and a half late, everyone had to wait, he was totally rowdy. Well, you won't see him back next year. Meanwhile, he went to Rio and he got held up. Eight o'clock in the morning, he came back from a night of partying. They took a gun to his head, they grabbed, he said, Where's your money? He said, I don't have anything. Took his $10,000 gold wristwatch right off his hand, so he's blaming it on Rio. He won't be back. Mm -hmm. Linda Evans, you'll see her back next year. It's been a year. rough week for Helmut, hasn't it? You've heard a lot of those rumors about Linda Evans and Richard Chamberlain. Forget it. He hasn't changed that much, and there's nobody permanently in her bed. But Linda is awfully Whoa. nice. She was, uh, Glad I Glad you know, we hey, heard, found, you heard it here resumes. first, ladies and gentlemen. Pictures and resumes. Okay. Meanwhile, she was leaving Miami Airport, and she boarded the plane. She realized she'd left her $400 tennis racket behind. I was there so with she, her. Well, then, <laughs> all right, then let's go. Is this a true story? So she go rushed ahead. back, and there was the woman clutching this bag with a racket. And... Linda said, oh, uh, that's my tennis racket. Can I have it? And Linda, oh, I love you so much. I must just keep this racket. Oh, please, oh, please. Well, Linda, being so nice, didn't want to make a scene and let her have the $400 racket and that's went on to the plane. absolutely true. That was and you can believe it if I say it. That was, that was the end of the, uh, it was uh, Linda Evans tennis tournament in Florida. I played in the tournament. That was around the I first week true. in January. You know me, right? And uh, yeah, and uh, it's I, true. I, and she gave the person the racket. Hey, look, really look, I am. She, by two the way, two, she was four. so nice to her public and the people who clamored around her was tell the folks about how, what a what a lady she is. With I just her fans did, and, okay. but I did it a lot I'm faster because then I could give you the blind item about the star in Dallas. All I heard was the Dynasty. part about her bed. Okay, well, yes, because you got to keep moving, Alan. Pick it up. Okay. Listen, there's a star on Dynasty, and you know who you are. 
And if you're seeing that specialty bar anymore in Hollywood, you know you'll be off the show. Specialty Can you guess bar? who it is? Uh-oh, sushi, oh, somebody's Let's go to sushi. commercial. <laughs> Some more gossip about He's sushi. He's been warned, and I'm telling you, it's over. Meanwhile, Diane Carroll mm -hmm. uh, and I were both at the same place. We're at Arthur John's. I was getting blown out, and she was next to me getting done. And at the uh, hairdressers, yeah, you know. Yeah, thank you. This Woo. is where, you know, okay. we all go. All the stars go there to Arthur John's to get blown out and done. Anyway, she's going to play the first black... I can't really quote this on TV now. Can you Late night TV, I can't say the word witch. Well, I can say witch. Anyway, she's going to be the first black witch. She's huh, always You said made... everything else. Why can't you say witch? I don't know. Let's say of it. Course. You want to hear me say it? You hear it? Bleep. There it goes. There, that's it. Bleep. Meanwhile, uh. she will break... She will break... Um, she'll make TV history again. She made it once before when she played Julia. Yeah. Julia, she was the first black woman to have a primetime TV Mm -hmm. Series. Mm -hmm. Now she'll do it again, but she'll play another widow, but this time she won't be in white. There'll be no nurse, there'll be no comedy. Diane Carroll's gonna give Joan Collins a run for her money. You realize, of course, that the butler's secret, when well, he killed himself because his wife was black, it was Diane Carroll. And Kirby, that means Kirby's mother is black, and Kirby married up big, and that's the secret. That's why he killed himself, and that's why he tried to kill Joan. Do you watch the show? What in hell are you talking about? I'll explain about? it to you during the commercial. Okay. You be understand, right don't you? You know? Yeah. You got it? Thanks, Corey. And we're going to look forward to your uh, special report coming to us from New York. Who uh, yeah. doesn't do impressions of the celebrities, but gives his impressions of them, I guess. What are you, who are you trashing tonight? Farrah Fawcett and Ryan O'Neal. Both. Now, they're not going to get married. They're very much in love, but there's no immediate plans for marriage. But Ryan says he'd like to have a child, but there's a problem. He says... He's a male. <laughs> Is that the problem? Uh -huh. He says in his own words, I haven't been able to blank her up. I keep trying, but I can't do it, at least not yet. I could blank up every other woman, but the one I want to blank up. He has a way with words. He doesn't he? have a way with words. Now, that's from an upcoming Playgirl interview, and you can read all the dirty details. I think it's pretty rude talk myself, but remember, love means never having to say you're sorry. Now, about his acting technique, he says he doesn't have one, quote. He says he puts his face and gets a little sun. Now, he said that, I didn't, mm -hmm. and that's, that's what he says. There's a new TV movie coming out with uh, Farrah Fawcett, and it was going to be called The Whorehouse Sting, but the producers thought that was a little too risque, so now they're going to call it The Red Light Sting. I mean, I think they should grow up, CBS. I mean, can you imagine, I mean, having to change a title like that? Okay, Meanwhile, you know, she was famous for all that long hair, Alan, all that sexy long hair. Well, she yeah. had it all cut off, pretty short. She thought it was looking a little, little short, so she put a hair weave in. So when you see her in that TV movie, you'll see extra hair, and that's been weaved in as fake hair. Mm -hmm. So, Baruchnikov is in town along with American Ballet Theater. Oh, he didn't call? He, he's go I understand they're going to do a little pas de deux on the show or somebody from the troupe. You clean your mouth out and don't speak. Oh, no, that's French. You've got to get out and see it. You know, the American Ballet Theater is here in Los Angeles. It's the finest ballet troupe in the world. Mm -hmm. And just last night, Dom Perignon celebrated and gave $350,000 towards seven galas, which are going all across the country to underwrite their new production of Cinderella. Dom Perignon have... did Dom Perignon did it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Champagne Yellow in the world. The yes, Marvel. okay. Now, it's a new production of Cinderella, which Misha has also helped choreograph, along with Peter and Estes. And the evil sisters, sisters are going to be in drag. Your, your mouth got away from Step there for sisters a second. In, well, you know, we talk so about fast. drag, sometimes it gets a little heavy. <laughs> anyway, it's a million-dollar production. The costumes are fabulous. It's really great. And last night, there was this star-studded party. It's more stars than at the Oscars. It was really incredible. Mm -hmm. Shirley MacLaine, Michael Caine, Goldie Hawn, and Kurt Russell, they're going to get married. They did that movie Swing Shift, which is coming out soon. The new movie is called Protocol. They're going to be filming in Washington and in, in Morocco, mm -hmm. and they're going to get married. It'll happen before the end of April. How so nice. good luck for them. Okay. Gregory Peck was there, Jane Fonda, Steve Donna Mills, John Travolta, and Mary Lou Henner. They were off in a little corner, um, very, very much together. In fact, I think I believe that maybe really a I thought it was like hype and a press thing, but I, they were touching and kissing and very close. So they were close. off together I think I'm going to believe it. Well, they were at the Beverly Wisher, at trying the, to have some the Don Perignon Gala, trying to have some privacy. I went up sneaking, looking around, you know. It looked pretty serious to me. Cary Grant was there, Barbara Streisand. Mm -hmm. So who was she out with? A new lover. His name is Richard Cohen. He's a banker and a lawyer. And guess what? He's the ex-husband of Tina Sinatra, which probably explains why, even though Sinatra's table at the Wilshire was here, and Streisand was right next to him, they didn't talk, they didn't weigh. The Barbara was going around the room, hello, hello, everybody but Sinatra. So I think there was a little leftover friction, probably, because of the ex-arrangement with his daughter. Okay. Meanwhile, I was standing there, and Sinatra goes, smiles and goes, I went, me? You know? So I troops right over, you know, walked right over. Well, this and is, uh, I the raised big guy my, now? This, this is, is the big guy, senior? and I, I've never spoke to him before. And I just never mm -hmm. have. He called me over, so I went right over. I raised my glass and toasted him and told him I was looking forward to seeing the Sinatra Suite, which is a new ballet choreographed by Twyla Tharp, which actually Misha and Elaine Crudeau, fabulous, mm -hmm. together, were going to do. And he, I think, thought I was a waiter. 
But when he saw me with the glass and realized that I wasn't, he was very charming. It was my first taste of the Sinatra charm. Mm -hmm. And I guess he can be as nice as sometimes he is nasty. Meanwhile, Brishnikov, as I said, is just dancing better than he ever has. I think he's actually at the peak of his form. Now, you, of course, you remember he was out with Jessica Lange, the yes. Oscar-winning movie star. More than out with. The, out with. They were buried together. In fact, they have a little child named Alexander. She's four years old. When Jessica finally left Misha and he, she dumped him, he was destroyed, virtually hysterical, very upset, very depressed. But, uh, of course, Jessica's gone into the arms of the Pulitzer Prize-winning actor and author, Sam Shepard. Mm -hmm. And, happily, I must say that... Um, Misha's found love, too, with Lisa Reinhardt. She's a, uh, in the corps de ballet of American Ballet Theater. And although they don't dance together on the stage, you can take it from me, they're very close off the stage. Yeah. Meanwhile... You um, heard it here. You heard it here. Um, Brushnikov has just decided not to sign a new directorship contract with American Ballet Theater. He's going to remain as the artistic director of American Ballet Theater without a contract. Why? Because he wants to remain uh, in control artistically, and he wants to be free to dance with other companies and make movies. So, also last night, uh, performing at the gala was Gregory Hines. And Gregory and Misha are going to make a movie together called White Nights. And this is going to be about a uh, Russian defector who comes to America, runs into another dancer, and then is going to defect back to Russia. So we're going to have this um, defection ex expatriism story. And Misha, who is a natural defector, once from Russia, then to American Ballet Theater, then to New York City Ballet, and then back to American Ballet Theater, is now, of course, defecting to Hollywood. He wants to make movies. That was very confusing, but I tried but to you, stay with you. But did you follow that? Yeah, or not? Does everyone get that? Like Misha wants to make movies, but he will sequel. still dance with American Ballet Theater, okay. but remain so without pay and without a contract, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. Also performing last night at the Don Perignon Gala was Linda Ronstadt. Now, she's singing her brand new thing called What's New, and all of a sudden, what happens? She forgot the lyrics. I mean, everybody broke up. Right there in front of everybody, gone the lyrics. Um, now, they had cameras in there to take pictures, and even TV cameras. Now, Misha said no problem filming him and Elaine Cudot doing this fabulous Sinatra suite ballet, but... Linda, who's been fat and very uptight about it. In fact, we went to the same spa called Rancho La Porter. She doesn't allow herself to be photographed. Once we were doing aerobics in class and we're sweating and going up and down, and on comes the Linda Ronstadt song. She rushes out of the class screaming, oh, whenever I hear myself sing, I don't think I can sing anymore. And it was a really star-studded night, more stars than at the Oscars. So she's not happy with her sound, Linda Ronstadt? No, she's happy with her sound, but when she hears herself, she feels maybe she will never be able to sing again. I not a singer, maybe you can explain that. Mm, I don't sound at all But like it was her. a fabulous night for American Ballet Theater and completely underwritten by Don Perignon. Mm -hmm. well, and good. it was a great night. Thank you for the update. Well, let's talk about David Bowie. You know, being a star is getting harder and harder. He's got six bodyguards now full-time. It's costing him $500,000 a year. Now, you know, with most stars now that have bodyguards, do you have bodyguards? Uh, no. Some of them no. are actually paramedics. In I case use an antiperspirant, are... though. That's I good. I haven't even got a body, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just let it go, wherever it wants to go, right? <laughs> but you'll find that among the bodyguards nowadays, you'll always find a couple of paramedics in case of accidents. Paraparamedics. It's getting scary. Mm -hmm. It's getting scary. What I kind of accidents do, do some of the stars have? Well, I think that you can find that they can get killed. That's an accident. That's an accident, That's, sure. Yeah. I mean, there are, you know, conti as a star, you know you've been threatened, haven't you, before? I haven't been killed, Have though. you been followed? Huh? Have you been attacked? Who's Ooh, yes, attack? I love it. Take out my... Mrs. Price. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Mrs. Price. If I see him in the alley, I'm like, oh, check, please. Thank you. Yeah. you know he's going to come back to hunt you. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Who else were you going to talk about? Well, I just came back from Aspen for the Subaru Winter National World Cup downhill races, and there was Joyce DeWitt. Now, you know, there's been a lot of rumors about Joyce being very unhappy and angry with her co-star, John Ritter, from Three's Company, because, of course, the show has been been uh, changed, shall we say, and all mm -hmm. the original stars except for John and the new one, Mary Cataret, have been phased out. Now, she was very depressed and upset about it, only because she cared so much about the show. But Joyce is okay, she's in love. She was only concerned because her, she cared so much about the show. She loved the show so much. Well, she wants to go to Broadway. She's considering a serious, dramatic role in a TV series. She's talking about doing a movie. She was up there staying in a condo with Tab Hunter. They are not an item, the two of them, though. I mean, I can assure you that. Tab is going to make a new movie with Divine called Lust in the Dust. Mm -hmm. I don't think those two are an item either, but look for a new movie from okay. those two. Well, you'll come back with some items uh, later. And, you uh, know it. And if, you, uh, and if we don't get those actual people on the show, we'll have uh, Fred Travelina come back, and he'll do all those people. Is Fred redressed now? Is he, is he himself? Let's welcome Fred back. The mob, oh, that's it. No, not quite like that. Listen, I've just flown in from New York. Pan Am gave me a great flight. The food is good. I was out all late last night. The Saint, the Black Party, don't even ask about it. Charlton Heston said to say hello. <laughs> I guess I won't get a chance to. Charlton ask, said to say hello. I went say down to see him in a detective story. Right? He's 
Charlton does a really good job. He's really a fine actor, but this is one play they should have done. Keith Carradine perfects a beautiful Brooklynese accent, really a great character study. It's one of his first comic roles, but again, I don't really think they should have done this play. But you know who can do more than push a Polaroid button? Who? It's Marriott Hartley. I didn't know she can act. She really, she was great. Of course. So Dudley Moore and Susan Anton are kaput. He gave her a million dollar house. How did he reward her? Well, it's, it's over. So Susan is off in the arms of John Denver. He's looking into some new mountains now. I mean, what a combination. Okay. Sylvester Stallone. I mean, where is she going to go next? Hold That's it, all I want to know. Time out, time out. Now, I was uh, out for dinner one, just the other night uh, for the first time in, in weeks and was at a table right beside uh, Susan and Dudley. They are, you know, this don't forget, even when Dudley went off with Christy Brinkley, who has now left Billy Joel to go with Daryl Hall. I mean, it's like an incestuous circle. You're married, so it's just, they just no, go just back and forth. I just want you to know that he has, they have their own table at Denny's, and uh, that's... <laughs> and they, they, they still do things under the table, but believe me, right now, she is definitely with John Denver and Aspen at this very minute. Meanwhile, Carrie okay. Fisher, of course, still very saddened by the miscarriage she had with her husband, Paul Simon. Their marriage now needs a bridge over the troubled waters. He's out, he's in New York, she's out here, she's going to parties alone. Let's hope they can patch this up. There is problems right now. However, she is going to work on a new TV series. It's going to be the Carrie Fisher series. Meanwhile, Deborah Winger is still very much in love with the governor of Nebraska, Robert Carey. They're very much together. And uh, I don't know when he governs. He's been in London with her. He's been in New York with her. He's acting like a press agent. I mean, we're Nebraska. Find your governor. I think you're going to need it. Meanwhile, she will not win the Oscar. I think you'll find Shirley MacLaine will definitely win the Oscar. And uh, Shirley right now has no man in her life. She actually says that her physical shocker, her energy, has moved up to her mind and her heart. And she's not interested in sex or men. And right now, she, all she's interested in is in her work. Hmm. And she's getting ready for a Broadway show. Candy Bergen and Louis Malle, there's been a lot of rumors that their marriage is over. It's not true. Their marriage is fine. They've been separated because she's in New York getting ready to bring out her autobiography, Knockwood, and he's in Texas filming a movie. Okay, that's a relief. We'll have more with... Uh, We're uh, catching up Curry on love. Hay. We have to have tonight. a commercial first. And Billy Rankin will be here to sing. <laughs> Corey is spreading rumors or trying to start one? I was trying to about your husband. You were going to tell me what was it? No, 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 no. Her husband's a cop, so I'm always really careful with her. But there's one story I want to know if it's true. You were getting ready to do your Las Vegas opening. Yes. And all of a sudden, the night before, your arranger just walked out and left you. Your musical arranger just left you for that. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. That's not true. That's not true. We can't believe none of this stuff. Well, that's why I'm asking you. I heard that your musical arranger walked out, and then Don Rickles, Mr. Meaty himself, said, Don't worry, Ann. I'll lend you my own arranger, and then you, your well, show is Well, that part's true, but that part's true. See, my conductor got snowed in in Atlantic City. What kind of snow was that? His name is Bill Fain. Oh, 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 he doesn't do that stuff. That, no. Hey, this is a humorous show. No, that's very well, humorous. Well, then don't stop the right. roll. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, no, what happened was he got snowed in in Atlantic City, and uh, Mr. Meany, who we affectionately call him Mr. Meany because he's really a gracious man, Don Rickles said that I could use Nelson Cole, and Nelson was absolutely so you terrific. Were so there okay, it so, is. Well, so that's, that, that's why I asked to find out. You see? Well, but we just good. did this one on camera. That's how we you find see? out the truth. That's so good. let me just tell you that Mick Jagger and Jerry Hall had their baby. It's called <laughs> Elizabeth Scarlet. After Scarlet, I guess, and Scarlet O'Hara. Now, the baby, okay, so so the baby has got a great rock and roll start, okay? Mm -hmm. So they're leaving the hospital, and the baby goes out with a, with a woman, not Jerry Hall. And the photographers are all moving in. The bodyguards slug one photographer, knocks him flat. This baby's already causing a scandal. He's weeks, hours old. It's already a scandal. This is Mick Jagger's number three. There's Jay Jagger by Bianca. There's Karis by Masha Hunt. And now we have by Jerry Hall, Elizabeth. Now, the reason he's not going to probably ever marry her is because he's afraid about his money. Now, Mick, you've got enough money, so look. You don't believe in prenuptial agreements, okay, so they go wrong. You pay a few million to Bianca. Maybe you'll have to pay a few million to Jerry in the end. It doesn't work out, but I think you should marry her and marry her now. She deserves it. How did you know Mick was watching right this moment? Did I heard know? he always watches your show. Oh, okay. Doesn't Just everybody watch this show? Just Eddie Murphy, I think Eddie Murphy, I think Eddie Murphy is funny and I like him, but what kind of a poor sport is he? He's actually gone public and now he said that he's leaving Saturday Night Live after five years. He says, I can't wait to leave the show. I don't think the show is funny. I hate the show. Hey, Eddie. How can you say that? What kind of a poor sport are you? So we got a $50 million deal with Paramount, but I really don't think that he should bite the hand that fed him so well and made him a star. Meanwhile, speaking of biting the hands, uh, oh good, okay, Lisa Figora is the new girlfriend in his life. She's a college student, and the Murph and he are now engaged, and they are planning to get married, but he wants to know her a little bit better. I think Everybody he's worried Eddie about his money, and, too. Uh, Eddie and Lisa. And Lisa. Eddie Lisa. and Lisa. Right. Meanwhile, um, Eddie and Rick James are talking a new record. 
It's going to be called Party All the Time. It sounds like their life story. They're also talking a possible movie together. Meanwhile, Brian De Palma is searching everywhere for a woman who will do sex solitaire and do this really graphic, sexy, horrible, fabulous, kind of juicy thing in this new movie called Body Double. It's going to be about a, so about a pornography star. Her name will be Holly Body. Do you want to do this one? No. Yeah. I'm Nelly right now. I just got back from Manhattan where she's starring with Cheetah Rivera in the new big Broadway smash hit, The Rink. Now, The Rink is a great play. There's a great book. However, I don't think it's a great musical. I think Karen and Ebb could have provided some bigger songs, more romantic, more lush for those big voices that both Liza and Cheetah have. During the show, several of the cast members got sick. The guys, the whole chorus of guys, and some of the guys actually go in drag and play some of the girls' roles. So when they were out with sick, Liza said, well, I'll get in drag. I'll play all the roles, but the union wouldn't let her do it, so she didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Liza herself, a real trooper, goes on spraying ankle. She's been dancing on a sprained ankle for a week. Mm. Finally, the doctor said, look, cancel the show one day, just get off that foot. So she did. Her marriage, despite all the rumors to Mark Garrow, who is a sculptor, is solid. Now, they call me once a week to say the marriage is over, it's finished, but I can guarantee that Liza's happy. The only who thing that isn't... To say oh, that. people call me all... I mean, I get calls. You can't believe the calls I get. And some of them are true and some of them aren't, but my job is to find out the truth. That marriage is solid. Now, there is one Very problem... Mason here. There is one problem with that marriage, and that is, of course, they have been unable to have a child. She's been had at least two miscarriages, which mm. is very sad. But as Liza has told her half-sister, Lorna Luft, who they shared Judy Garland as a mother, Lorna is five months pregnant, so there will be a baby in the family. It will not be a girl. It'll be a boy. Mm -hmm. And it'll be called Jesse Cole Richards. Now, Lorna is married to someone named Jake Hooker. Now, for some reason, if it was going to be a little girl, they didn't want a little Miss Hooker. And if, they, and if it was going to be a boy, they didn't want it to be a hooker either. But there's no, they're going to reverse the names a little bit. And his name is going to be Jesse Cole Hooker Richards. Okay, we all got that? Meanwhile, Lorna has just come off For finishing... For those of you sending uh, birth announcement cards... Uh... <laughs> Where the boys are, she just finished the record, and we're looking forward to seeing Lorna in that. Meanwhile, um, Liza herself with Dudley Moore is going to open a restaurant in Los Angeles this coming May. And I guess they kind of call it Arthur's Cabaret. I don't, I'm not sure what they're going to call it, actually, but they will be... I Open hope he'll be playing the piano, and I hope that she'll be singing. I went to see Anthony Quinn in Zorba. You remember the movie Zorba that also had Lila Cordova in it when she won the Academy Award for it? Well, Lila, she, she steals the show from Anthony. Anthony's good, but he can't sing one note. But a great stage presence, and the play is good. I enjoyed it. Now, did you know he started off his... Um, his life as being a painter. That's how he made his living before he became a star. In fact, he used to do portraits of the stars and send them off and hope the stars would send him a little money. In fact, one of his abstract paintings has just been chosen by the United Nations to be on one of their envelopes. So he's getting a lot of recognition for his art as well. And they may film this musical Zorba for TV. We hope so. Meanwhile, Elizabeth Taylor is, you know, not working. She's told him she doesn't want to work right now. She wants to take her time and, and, uh, and think about her life. And what she's doing is when she stays in hotels, she has told the switchboard to put calls from alcoholics, fellow alcoholics alcoholics around. You know, Liz admits she's an alcoholic and had that pill problem, and she is actually counseling alcoholics. So if you're an alcoholic, you can call Liz up and get a little counseling. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, she's right now, she's at the Palm Air Spa, if you want to call her there. She's lost 25 pounds. She's got 20 to go. And I think she really wants to pull herself together for a big comeback. Alexander Cohen had a meeting with her. She was an hour late for the lunch, the big producer, to get her to be on the Tony Awards show. But she said no to that. She and her fiancé, Victor Luna, will go off to Europe for a real vacation. And she's really enjoying her life. But you know who is working? Here's her son, Michael Wilding Jr., who has those beautiful blue eyes, looks a lot like Elizabeth Taylor. He will play Christ in a 12-hour miniseries for NBC. Now, he used to be wild. I mean, this Wilding was wild, but now he's gone to being good, so he'll be Christ, and I don't I don't think that makes Liz the Virgin Mary. No. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tony, <laughs> Tony Curtis. Tony Curtis is very, very ill. Right now, he's in Cedar sinai Hospital. You could probably send him cards and letters. It's that serious. He has cirrhosis of the liver, and uh, his wildlife is now taking a high price. And we're all hoping that, that, uh, that Tony will pull himself back together. Come on, Tony, you can do it. I mean, I have seen that man do everything you can imagine. Meanwhile, Sammy Davis Jr. Um, <laughs> has now announced that for four months now, he hasn't had a drink. I guess a lot of people could take a... Take a hint from that, so we're hoping that Sammy will keep it off the bottle. Meanwhile, Maureen Stapleton, who probably shouldn't do a lot of things either, does them all, went out to a party for Kay Ballard, who's got a brand new big hit Broadway show of her own, a one-woman show up in New York right now. And there was a party for her at the Limelight. That's the church that uh, they turned into a discotheque, caused a lot of problems. Anyway, uh, she's a big practical joker, this Maureen Stapleton. She took matches. She went sneaking up to this 
to this critic that writes the Cosmopolitan. His back was turned. She goes, one match trying to light him on fire, two matches trying to light him on fire. The third match, I mean, the guy's going up in flames. Now, I mean, this is even a step down. You know what she used to do? She used to go getting everyone's fly. She would see a photographer. She'd go right up there, and I guess she didn't get much reaction from the front of the men, so now she's going for the back. I, I'm not sure what this means. I quite think that Elizabeth... Quite a practical joker. Quite a practical joker. I'm not sure what. She claims herself, she said, you know, I'm not housebroken. I shouldn't be let out. Sometimes I agree. I think Elizabeth Taylor, who became one of her best friends when they did Little Fox's Day, they should get together, and, and I think uh, Maureen could use a little counseling from Liz, too. Well, you know, Oscar madness has been upon us, and I've been like, I haven't even been home to change, and of course uh, I thought you might want to see You mean you wore that to the Oscar? Yes, this is my Oscar outfit, and mm -hmm. uh, I did want Joan Collins and her $15,000 red and black bugle bead thing now do me, so this is what I did to compete, but, but well, it's been look, crazy. Uh, you know, my... absolutely glittery. I mean, yeah, well, it's Hollywood, you know, and the Oscars, I mean, it's, that's what it's supposed to be. Anyway. My lunch. This is more sort of Bakersfield. Let's let's talk about that. No, I'm... what's that? <laughs> no, it's. I'll uh, give it to Gloria for you to I wear. Think it, I think it looks great. Fabrice I think did you it. should be singing in that. No, I'm going to leave the singing to you. <laughs> anyway, uh, my lunch for Barbara Carrera at the Hard Rock Cafe went beautifully, and then of course the Oscars themselves, and the Oscar ball, then Swifty Lazar's dinner, and then Spago, and then Peter Morton's dinner at Morton's. Oh. It was crazy out all you, night. It was you crazy. Lunch Let's talk you. about winners and losers. <laughs> Let's talk about Shirley MacLaine and Deborah Winger. Now, everyone's talking about a few between the two of them. It's not exactly a few. There was a lot of friction on the set. They didn't exactly get along. What they did was they stayed in character, so they were argumentative. They're not the best of friends. Deborah has said completely herself. She said, you know, friendship will take time. It'll happen. When she made Urban Cowboy with um, John Travolta, they weren't the best of friends until about a year afterwards, too. So it, it takes a little time. You know, after she made an Officer and Gentleman, she was so upset about her career that she went off to Ohio and said she wouldn't come back until Jeff Bridges offered her Mike's murder. Mm. And the script was so good that she said, all right, I'll come back. Why was and she so upset about Officer and a Gentleman? Well, she said that there were two minutes and 36 seconds left out of the plot line and out of on-the-screen treatment that would have made her happy, which would have developed her character as well as John Travolta's character. And she was very upset. In fact, John she Travolta thought it was wasn't a, in Officer and a Gentleman. I mean, um, you're Richard right. Richard Gere. Richard Gere. That's there, the two look, minutes they the took out. There's they the took out her two minutes of Travolta. No wonder she missed that dance number. We have to take a commercial, and we'll be Richard right back. Richard Gere with the end right Somebody like that. Somebody likes it somewhere, and then they, that's our Corey Hay. And, and we've got to get started, too. now. Jeff okay. Bridges, of course, is an actor. It's Jim Bridges who's the director. I think Jeff probably would like to direct, too. But anyway, Mike's murder was done by Jim Bridges. And what I think is interesting, Deborah Winger thinks all this talk about her causing friction, she thinks it's great. She thinks friction is heat, and she thinks it's a compliment. Did you know that in 1973, she was in an auto accident? She fell out of actually the back of a truck and was actually paralyzed at 18 years old and blind for over a year. And she was... It was a turning point in her whole life, and that's when she made her commitment to acting. And then, of course, she went on to become a big star. Now, Shirley MacLaine is in Las Vegas. Just finished her show in Las Vegas, and now she's going to New York to produce her one-woman show. It's going to be an autobiographical show, and she'll be singing and dancing and looking wonderful. One of the big stories is she talks about going to India and going up the hill and finally finding the guru to get to get the answer, and the answer was, life's a bowl of cherries. It's a fun show. The first actual show she'll do on Broadway will be done for the literacy volunteers who go and tutor people, adults who don't read. One million copies of her new book, Out on a Limb, in paperback form is now available, and Don't Fall Off the Mountain, her autobiography, is being released, all cashing in, of course, on the big winner. Did you know that Elizabeth Taylor actually turned down the Shirley MacLaine part in terms of endearment? Sure. Yeah, that was before the clinic, I think, when she was a little, had a clouded her vision. And Burt Reynolds actually turned down the Jack Nicholson role to do the dreadful and the awful The Man Who Loved Women. I bet pulling his hair out, what there is or what there was. Anyway, Jack Nicholson, who, of course, is 47 years old, uh, made $75,000 a day to do terms of endearment. Two weeks, $1 million, and, of course, just look what he got. He started his career in the MGM mailroom. He spent 11 years now with Angelica Houston. There is no plans for marriage at this time. Why? He makes my blood boil. Hmm. Of course, don't forget that what? brief. He makes your blood boil? No, 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 no. Wait, hey, listen up. Well, he doesn't make shirt. my blood boil. Angelica Houston. Man, he couldn't make my blood boil in any way. Angelica Houston's blood boil. Wait a minute, we're going to find out whose blood is boiling. Come on. Talks. I, I'm going to fall off the couch. I mean, the night after Oscar, the day after, I don't even know where I am, but let's go back to Aspen and Jack Nicholson. Now, it was in Aspen that Jack said he learned to live alone. It's the first time Angelica was here pursuing her acting career. It's going very well, and he actually learned to live alone. He calls himself a public servant. He realizes now he's no matinee idol. In fact, he said he was happy to play older. He'd often admire admired older actors like Walter Houston. He says the whole midlife crisis idea, the fact that he's fat and overweight, he says he's been that since he was four years old. He says he's not a womanizer. 
Can you imagine? I mean, he says he's not a womanizer, and he's had a monogamous relationship with Angelica for quite a while now. Okay, Jack, I believe you. He wants children. He'd like, he said he'd like to have a big family, but there are no plans for marriage. He does have a daughter named Jennifer, who's 20, not, who was the actress and the feminist. Now, he's tried to get hold of um, her to find out if it's his daughter, try to get hold of him. They are just turning him off, so he doesn't really know. He says he's open about it. Now, what about his acting technique? Because he's we should discuss that. He's actor. a big winner. He's a great actor. Jack he Nicholson says that is he's a great primo. actor, and he says that sex is the key to his acting. That's why. You and see? it's also yeah. his favorite subject. Everything relates to sex. He's the great seducer. They've called him that since he was a teenager. Now, when you ask him, in, as Rolling Stone did about that son, and he talks to Rolling Stone very frankly, they even asked him about his drug use. He describes it as convivial. I will leave it at that. Um, he actually loved Is convivial the against the law? I don't know. Do I think it? that was a good word for him. Colombian convivial <laughs> is coming in over the... Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm making no comment. Um, he does say that he well, loves the Academy Awards. <laughs> Isn't it really? Well, he's got lawyers. Anyway, the point is that um, he says he wants to win more Oscars than Walt Disney, and he wants to win them in, in different categories, and he had his eye on that best supporting category for a long time. He loves the Academy Awards, and I'm glad to see an actor who does love the Academy Awards. That's good. Now, an Oscar nomination can mean big bucks. A nomination or an Oscar can mean major money. Now, Tom Conti for Ruben Rubin, he got $100,000 for that. Now, his asking price, $1 million. Cher for Silkwood, she was paid $250,000. Her next film for Peter Bogdanovich, will be called Mass, she will get $1 million for it. Now, Cher has finally got her lifelong dream. She said, no, she didn't want to be a rock and roller. She didn't want to be a, a sunny. And she didn't want to do anything but always be a serious actress. She says, buying 10 pairs of shoes will not make me happy. Well, Cher, I'm glad to hear that. Okay. And she says, when you see the Cher, the public Cher, it's not really her. She invented it. All she ever wanted to do was be famous and have boyfriends and clothes and go to great parties and have fabulous houses. When you call Sonny and ask him about Cher now, he says, oh, it's her life, I don't care. What, is she, what does Cher say about Greg Allman? I couldn't care less if I ever speak to him again in my life. Now, Cher claims to know God personally and says that she has one of his special children and that she will always be taken care of. I believe that. Now, in Silkwood, she looked awful. When she first saw herself on the screen, she cried, but she said she felt like a real actress. Now, what is she doing with her life? She wants to do a new play. She's doing an autobiography. She has a younger lover, 10 or 12 years younger, named Belle Kilmer. Why not? She's moving to New York City. She has new invisible braces on her teeth. She's on a new no-sugar diet. She has a new agent, and good luck. You've got a new career. Congratulations, Cher. Well, that is the uh, Cher report up to the minute uh, for those uh, who wanted to know that. And if you watch did our you Corey Hay closely, yes, I did. You'll notice that all of that enunciation and rapid-fire delivery comes and at no time do his lips ever leave his mouth. And Thank I you. think that's a... Uh, I think for thing. the night after Oscar, I'm doing pretty good. Come well, back next right. week. Oh. On Tuesday, I'll be oh, there. Yeah.